Welcome to the tutorial session on OpenForm. I will be showing you how to use OpenForm to solve a simple problem of 2D conduction. We will start from scratch and solve the entire problem including visualization. You can carry out these steps after you have installed and carried out basic tutorials of OpenForm and Paraview. This tutorial is split into two parts. First, we will describe the physical problem, carry out the CFT solution and view the results all blindly by following the steps. In the second part, I will explain the meaning of each step and how you can extend them to solve other problems. The problem we will be discussing is 2D conduction in a rectangular slab. The side walls of the slab are subjective to constant temperature. Three walls are at the same temperature and the top wall is at a different temperature. The problem is to find the steady state temperature at a given location on the slab. The technical problem is stated like this. A rectangular slab of width 5 cm and height 10 cm is subject to constant temperature walls as shown in the figure. Find the steady state temperature at a depth of 2 cm from the top along the midline. If the top wall is at 60 degrees and all other three walls are at 26 degrees centigrade. The generic problem can be stated this way. We have a slab of height h and width W. Three walls are at temperature T0 and the top wall is at T1. Find the temperature at a depth of Z from the top. We can make the following assumptions. The problem is 2D, that is, there is no variation of temperature along the depth. This can also be stated as the front and back surfaces are adiabatic or insulated. The heat flux is zero across these surfaces. This essentially means that there is no radiation or convection in any of the boundaries. It is purely conduction within the domain. The problem is then to obtain the steady state temperature profile. Let us first formulate the model, that is, identify the governing equations and boundary conditions. Since there is only conduction, we have the equation for steady state conduction, which is rho c partial t by partial t equals divergence of the heat flux, which is k times grad t. Here, Rho is the mass density of the slab material, C is the specific heat and K is the thermal conductivity. We make an additional assumption of constant thermal conductivity. So the K term comes out of this derivative and we have a Laplacian of T. Similarly, since we are interested in getting the steady state temperature profile, the left hand side term can also be dropped. Then we have the boundary conditions. At x equal to 0 and w, at all y, the temperature is T0. Temperature is T0 at the bottom wall 2, that is at y equal to 0 at all x. At the top wall at y equal to h, the temperature is T1. Although we can solve this problem in the original dimensions or original units. It is convenient to solve it in dimensionless variables. This gives us a better insight to the physics of the problem. It also makes the problem well conditioned in the sense that all variables take a value of the order of 1. The values are not dependent on the unit system we choose. 
For this, we need to identify correct scales of temperature, length and time. Though we are interested in the steady state profile, in CFT, it is convenient to solve the unsteady state problem and we can use the steady state solution as a special case. So we go back to our steady state unsteady equations. First, we identify the temperature scale. We can use any temperature to get a dimensionless theta. It could be one of T0, T1, the room temperature, human body temperature, or even boiling point of water. Any of them will give a dimensionless theta. But none of these temperatures are relevant to the governing equations. Why? We recognize that in the governing equation only gradients of temperature occur. There is no term that is dependent on the absolute temperature. Therefore, it would be incorrect to use T0 or T1 as the temperature scale. Instead, we use the difference in the temperature as a dimensionless variable. This means we should choose a variable theta as an increment from any one of the boundary temperatures. We have taken that to be T0. The dimensionless temperature difference theta can then be written as T minus T0 by T1 minus T0. For the length scale, we have to find the distance over which T changes significantly. In this case, the maximum variation of T is from T0 to T1 or the maximum difference is T1 minus T0. Along the vertical direction at the middle, T goes from T0 to T1 over a distance h. Along the horizontal direction near the top, the temperature changes from T0 to T1 over a distance w by 2. So we can choose either w or h as our length scale. Depending on the relative magnitude of w and h, either one or both can be important. We arbitrarily choose h. It is important to use the same scale for both the coordinate variables x and y. We introduce new variables eta, which is x by h, and c, which is y by h. Finally, for the time scale, since there is no imposed time scale, we have to identify the scale from what is left out in the equations. Substituting for the dimensional variables for temperature and length, we get partial theta by partial t on the left hand side and Laplacian of theta on the right hand side. Note that the Laplacian here is dimensionless. Rearranging the constants to the right hand side, we get this equation. Here, LHS has the dimension of inverse time. So the right hand side must also have the same. From this, we can identify the time scale to be rho c h square by k. In other words, we can define a new dimensionless variable tau which is defined by t times k by h square rho c. Recognize that the term k by rho c is nothing but the thermal diffusivity alpha. Therefore, the time scale is h square by alpha or tau is t by h square by alpha. In terms of the dimensionless variables, we just have partial theta by partial tau equals Laplacian of theta. And the boundary conditions are given by this set of expressions. There are only zeros and ones. There are no free parameters in this problem. 
all the physical parameters have been absorbed in the dimensionless variables. The advantage of reducing to a dimensionless problem is now evident. The solution to the problem is the same. If we use a different slab material or another combination of temperature, the solution will not change. We just have to solve one numerical problem. And from that we can infer particular physical conditions by converting back to the dimensional variables. We will end this basics outlining the need to retain time in the differential equation, even though we only want steady state solution. This is because most solvers are efficient when solved in time, rather than to look for the steady state solution directly. This means that we have to specify the time integration steps for the solver and when to stop the simulation. Now that we have the time scale, which was used to obtain the dimensionless time tau, we can obtain estimates for tau max, which is an estimate of the time at which steady state will be reached. This value is expected to be of the order of 1 because the equation is balanced and both sides should be of the same order. This is another advantage of the dimensionless variables. We are able to estimate this quantity without reference to the actual physical time it will take for a particular material. Similarly, we can set the time step delta tau to be at least one order of magnitude low, smaller than the tau max. All this can be done in a generic way without reference to a particular material. With that background, we are now ready to run open form. We will first run it blindfolded, meaning just follow the commands without need to understand any CFD aspect of it. This will give us a minimal, minimum viable solution. Firstly, you should have got OpenFoam and Paraview installed, preferably on a Linux machine. On Windows and Mac OS, there are several dependencies which needs an expert to help you. It is better to install Linux on a separate partition and not as a virtual machine or as Windows subsystem Linux. I am also assuming that you have carried out the basic tutorials of OpenFoam and Paraview covered in the earlier lectures. For the conduction problem, visit this URL bit.ly slash of cases. From there, go to heat transfer folder and download the file called slab t4.tar.gz. In your Linux, open a terminal and type the following command make the dollar foam run. This will create a directory where all your open form cases will be kept. On Linux, the command prompt is denoted by the first dollar symbol. You must not type the first dollar symbol. It will be prompted to you by the terminal. Then change the working directory. Untar the case file you just downloaded. Using the command tar minus xvzf slab t4.tar.gz. This will create all the required directories and the files from the gzip file. The set of files that gets created looks like this. In the following slides, the right hand side column shows a part of what will appear on the screen as you execute the actions given on the left hand side. This directory contains two script files all run and all clean. 
to run open form on this case type dot slash all run this will create the mesh using block mesh part of the output you will see is shown here then it will run the solver here the solver is called laplacian foam finally it will process the log files from the solver this is useful to analyze the output to check if the solution has indeed converged. If you see this message and no other error on your terminal, that means that the run was successful. Now we can process the results on Paraview. Here again, we have kept everything ready for you. Type paraform. Note that this is not Paraview but paraform. This is a special way to call Paraview to process open form results. You will see a message created a temporary slab t4.open form on the terminal. Inside Paraview, from the file menu, click on load state. Then choose the file contour t.pvsm. In the options, Choose Search Files under Specified Directory. Make sure the directory below is your directory where OpenFoam was installed. Sorry, make sure the directory below is the directory where your OpenFoam case was uh, unzipped. Following this, you should see three viewports, one for the temperature profile, two for the temperature variation in the vertical direction and three for the spreadsheet output of the temperature profile. Use play button to view the animation. You can see how the temperature changes from the initial condition to the steady state. Now we will find the temperature at the desired location. In our original problem, we needed the temperature at a distance of 2 cm from the top or 8 cm from the bottom. This means that in the dimensionless variable C, it is 0 0.8. In the spreadsheet viewport, scroll down to the coordinate whose y component is 0 0.8. We see that the temperature at this point is approximately 0 0.353. Now we need to revert back to the dimensional variables. We found from the spreadsheet that theta is 0 0.353. Going back to the definition of theta, we can back calculate the value of temperature from this expression by substituting the values of T0 and T1. That's all. We have obtained the desired result using a set of scripts. We can check this against the analytical solution given in Encropera or other books. We did this all blindfolded to the workings of OpenFoam and Paraview. In the second part of this video, we will see the detailed working of each of the steps and understand their meaning. Thank you.